everyone uh, welcome to our bread and breakfast uh, so today we will study more about John chapter 4 uh, but before we start uh, please join me in a quick prayer thank you for this wonderful morning uh, that you have given us Lord. thank you Lord for the chance to share your word uh, bless me prepare my heart and my soul Lord, to, uh, to those who are listening God prepare them also as we are about to Read more and know more about your word in John chapter 4. I prepare also their heart and their mind, Lord, as they receive the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our sharing title for today, which is John chapter 4, is Jesus, the Life Transformer. So we have three sub points for our topic for today. First is Jesus initiates and cares for everyone. Second, Jesus accepts us despite our past. The other one is Jesus can convert your rejection into a story of acceptance and bold testimony. But before we proceed with the word, I just wanted to ask you these questions. Uh, have you ever experienced being outcast in a group or in your work wherein you feel like you are left behind or discriminated? Yung feeling na kahit anong bagay ang gagawin mo, hindi ka ma-appreciate because they already tag you as a person who doesn't exist. Or do you have any past experiences that you are afraid or ashamed to, uh, to reveal? Yung feeling na ijudge ka nila because of your mistakes from the past. Yung natatakot ka na hindi kaya accept ng pamilya mo, boyfriend mo, girlfriend mo, or churchmate mo, or mga kaibigan mo if you want to reveal these past experiences. Or in a positive note naman, how about if you have good news to share? How do you usually feel? Uh, alam ko for this one, uh, yung, yung naihihi ka sa excitement dahil may uh, good news kang isi-share sa asawa mo, pamilya mo, o kaya kahit kasama, kasama mo lang sa bahay. So definitely, you have this feeling na na-excite ka when you have something good news to share with your loved ones. So for those questions that I have just asked you, let's just relate it to our sharing for today. Uh, this is when the woman from Samaria had an encounter with Jesus that end up from being from end up, that end up from feeling of unworthiness to a life changing bold testimony. So what did Jesus do to the woman? And how did the woman react? So let's find out in John chapter four. So it says here in verse seven to ten A woman from Samaria came to draw a water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. From our reading is our first point under our topic, Jesus, the life transformer. Jesus cares regardless of our ethnicity, tribe, or during the time, Samar it is crucial for us to know about Samaritans. Samaritans who were mixed of Jewish or and non-Jewish ethnicity were not accepted by the Jewish community. In the same way, women were not considered as at par with men in the society during that time. So it was kind of hard to be either a Samaritan or a woman. And it's even harder, mas mahirap pa, if you are both Samaritan at saka a woman. In our reading a while ago, we have noted that it is a woman and at the same time, she is also a Samaritan. Which is kind of outcast during that time. So that is the social status in that scenario. That is why we can see here God's goodness and willingness to initiate first the conversation with the goal to transform the life of the Samaritan woman. It says in it says in verse 7, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." 
he clearly see that God initiated the conversation. So how did the woman react? It says in verse 9, The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? From that reading, we can see that the woman feels unworthy to serve Jesus because she is a woman and a Samaritan. That is why she even asked, Bakit ko humingi sa akin? E isa lang akong Samaritan. But Jesus doesn't care for Jews only, but she cares for everyone. She cares for you and me. So, in our life today, was there any time wherein you feel like God is only working to other people except for you? Or was there any time wherein God is talking to you and asking you something but you feel unworthy like the Samaritan? Was there any time also that God wants to initiate something in your dreams but you choose to brush it off and pretend that nothing happens? I want you to know that uh, Jesus cares for everyone and not with a certain group only. And that He is also always initiating into your heart to start a conversation and been wanting to let you know that He cares for you. So to continue it, how did Jesus respond with the Samaritan woman asking God, Why me? Why me, Lord? Jesus answered back in verse 10. It says here, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. After Jesus answered back, the woman asked again, Let's read in 11.30. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where, did, where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us well and drank from it himself, as did his son and his livestock Jesus. We can see from the, our past two verses, God is very patient in uh, answering back to the question and queries of the woman. And after the woman as again, Jesus answered back again in verse 13. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water I will give him will become in, will become in him a spring of water well up to eternal life. The woman, And then finally, after Jesus answered back, the woman told Jesus, Sir, Give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or to have come here to draw water. So we can see here again back-to-back -back questions and answer between Jesus and the woman. And it is very good thing to know to note that Jesus was very patient in teaching the woman. Even if the woman doesn't understand it yet. We can even see at verse 15, she said that I will not... Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. So even after the explanation of God, uh, she even uh, she still think she still understand it literally. But, but God is very patient in explaining it to her because Jesus cares. So in our daily life, let's not stop asking God and knowing more about Him, and don't. Uh, and don't fall into the thinking that God might get angry if you keep on asking. Because as you can see here, God really cares and very patient even if sometimes we don't understand it yet. But, but will eventually in the future. Let's go with our second point. God accept us despite our past. It says in verse 16 to 26. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you had had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Verse 20, Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you said that in Jerusalem, is the place where people ought to worship. And Jesus answered back again, 
Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is His Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And then in verse 25, the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ when he comes. He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. After asking her for a drink, Jesus showed that he knew the Samaritan woman had gone through multiple marriages, which made her even more of a social outcast. But when Jesus revealed himself to her as the Messiah whom both Jews and Samaritans hoped for, he was showing to her that the Messiah accepted her and welcomed her despite her past. So, is there something in your past that you had challenged surrendering to God? Please don't know that Jesus accepts us despite our past, same as the Samaritan woman. Are you afraid that others will judge you? Again, please don't know that Jesus is above all and can transform you and the people around you. Let's proceed with our third point. Jesus can convert your rejection into the story of acceptance and bold testimony. In verse 27, it says here, Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with the woman, but no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? In verse 28, So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I've ever did. Can this be Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. We can see here that the woman left her water jar and went away rushing into the town, testifying about her encounter with Jesus. So uh, imagine the excitement of that woman. She left her water jar just to share her encounter with Jesus. Is the, her main purpose why she is there before her encounter with Jesus Christ just because she is very excited to share the good news to other people and to testify with boldness about her encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ we can see here that she was totally amazed and transformed with her experience with Jesus and, and because of that excitement a lot of people were able to know Jesus and was transformed by Jesus. It says also in verse 42, They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we had heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. We can really see here that a transformation of one person can also lead a transformation of a lot of people. So today, what are your current goals or status, vices, dreams without God in it? Are you willing to leave them, uh, your, your water jar, now that you already had an encounter or about to have one with Jesus? Question would be, do you have excitement also in sharing God's goodness in your life to others and extend the joy that you have? Please know that God wants us to be bold in sharing how He has transformed us so that others will know through the help of our Jesus uh, how joyful it is to be transformed by Him. So we can really see here that from the very start that God can transform our story of rejection into a story of acceptance and bold, life-changing bold testimony. Let's remember it again. Jesus is indeed the life transformer. Jesus initiates and cares for everyone and that Jesus accepts us also despite our past and again lastly Jesus can convert our rejection into a story of acceptance and bold testimony so for our conclusion uh, before we pray God said in verse 40 but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to the eternal life. Also in verse 24, 
God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So brothers and sisters, let us not stop wanting to know more about God and worship Him in spirit and in truth, so that our life will be transformed and we can also help other people to be transformed through the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you now believe that Jesus Christ has accepted you despite your past? Or what area do you feel God is asking you to surrender to Him so He can show you His love and acceptance? So throughout the remaining days of this week, brothers and sisters, don't forget to ponder on those uh, learnings that we have. And at the same time, those questions that I've just raised you. Uh, meditate on it day and night. Ask God help, especially on especially in the part that you have hard times in giving up and surrendering to our Lord Jesus Christ. So we just close our eyes and pray to God. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for being our transformer. Thank you also for always uh, initiating and talking to us and caring for us, Lord. Uh, we thank you also for accepting us uh, despite our past and helping us to be bold, Lord, and testifying your greatness. Those who, to those who can surrender yet their past for you, uh, help them, Lord, to lay it down to you and give them the courage and strength to overcome. Uh, help us also, Lord, to be excited all the times in sharing your word and testifying that you transform our lives. May you use us, Lord, uh, to expand more your kingdom and be a blessing also to others. Um, the Lord, continue to protect us during this COVID-19 pandemic and give us strength uh, in doing our work and also to, to those who are seeking for their new work, Lord, guide them, bless them, and be with them. Again, Lord, uh, we offer our day and thank you for the blessing that about to come, Lord. This all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's it. Uh, see you again in our next Bread and Breakfast.